He's got the looks. He's got the moves. And he's got Q. But does his Q understand change control? Probably not. Does his Q understand risk assessments? Nah. And does his Q understand that effective management review involves quality system inputs, including audit results, process performance, conformity of products and services, and the extent to which you meet your quality objects, not to mention outputs like opportunities for improvement resource needs and changes needed to the quality system? Definitely not. Good thing your Q does. So to all the agents out there, remember, you have Q on your side. Qualtrics. Hello everyone, welcome to our 2021 Qualtrics User Conference. I'm so excited for us all to finally be back together again. I'm Amy Ankrum, I'm the CEO here at Qualtrics, and I'm super excited to be working with you all today. I know we're in a little bit of a different setting as a virtual conference, and normally we'd be hosting you all here in Blacksburg, uh, but the reality is we've got a really great program in store for you. In fact, just like James Bonds Martinis, we're gonna shake things up for you today. Uh, if any of you have ever been to any of our past events, you know we like to do things a little different at Qualtrics. So I assure you, this is going to be a really engaging, collaborative time today here in our virtual conference. The team's put a lot of work into really tailoring your day-long program for sessions that are best for that, for the learning, the collaboration time. And then you have a whole lot of sessions that are also available for you on demand. So uh, I'm very, very excited to share that with you today. Before we roll into those cool sessions though, I did wanna take a moment and just reflect a little bit on what a different time it is in our world today. Uh, here at Qualtrics, we have really taken a step back and realized uh, while, while a challenging time, it's been super rewarding to be able to serve you and the essential organizations you represent. Uh, when the world kind of came to a halt back in March of 2020, and everybody unexpectedly went to remote working, or at least many of you did, uh, we heard from you. We heard a lot about how you needed to try to use your Qualtrics system differently, seeking ways to automate things that you could handle uh, much more easily when you were in the office. Uh, we were able to accomplish that for you, uh, and it was very, very, uh, very good to see um, our system being leveraged in a lot of different ways. We also heard from many of you who needed to get people into Qualtrics quickly. Uh, and, and differently than before. And we were able to provide complimentary licenses uh, there at the peak of the pandemic when budgets and procurement cycles weren't what it was about. It was about getting you access to critical information. Uh, and that's what we do at Qualtrics. Give back is part of our DNA. Uh, so we've been happy to do deferred payment programs to be able to provide complimentary collaborative sessions with our Qualtrics team and experts, uh, go to remote implementations, and ultimately deliver content that we felt like was most important to you because you were telling us what you wanted to hear in educational webinars and videos and blogs. And we couldn't have done it without our great partner community. Uh, many, many of you have contributed to the content that we've been able to share uh, to our Qualtrics customers. Uh, so I want to give a big shout out to A2LA and a and in particular for the work that they've done with us over the past year and a half in terms of ongoing uh, virtual content. I also think this is a time, while uh, challenging, we, we here at Qualtrics like to look for the silver linings. Uh, and uh, one of those certainly is seeing what a contribution uh, our customers make in the world. Uh, we saw where many of you were uh, here making just a big impact uh, in your communities during the pandemic. Uh, so I wanted to highlight a few today uh, of some of those really important customers' uh, impacts. So we have first the CDC, uh, the Center for Disease Control, has certainly been working tirelessly to protect our nation's health and ensure that state and local public health partners had the resources, guidance, and scientific expertise they needed to respond. We also heard early, from, uh, early in the pandemic from MRI Global. They received permission from the FDA to get emergency use of the coronavirus to do safety vaccine testing. Uh, and they also were able to create a biocontainment system that enabled uh, us to safely evacuate uh, people from, passengers from cruise ships, uh, which we all remember was a challenging time. 
and uh, our customer sports medicine research and testing lab. They helped bring back America's pastime, uh, Major League Baseball, in a big way. So when there weren't any live sports being played, I know that was challenging for some. Uh, and in May of 2020, thanks to their thorough comprehensive testing with athletes, they were able to get uh, Major League Baseball back out on the field. And last but not least, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers was able to provide uh, nationwide support while, you know, to overflowing hospitals. They created hundreds of alternate overflow sites uh, for hospital beds and staff. So a big shout out to those organizations. Uh, I don't want to limit our thanks to just them. I know so many more of you have just played in a critical, critical role. Uh, and we thank you. And we're just proud to be able to, to be a part of a community with you and be your partner. So in addition to, yes, it's been a little bit of a crazy time, uh, we've got some new news going on at Qualtrics too that I, I wanna share. I'm sure many of you are already well aware that we were acquired in March of this year uh, by IDIGEN PLC. So IDIGEN is a publicly traded company on the London Stock Exchange based in the UK and as a world leader in risk and compliance solutions. And I can tell you that one of the really exciting things that I saw as we uh, looked at the opportunity to join IDEAGEN was the real alignment in, uh, in our purpose of serving organizations like yourself that make a critical contribution to society, uh, but also in the core value set. And I know that's something that uh, you've always appreciated from us and how we work together with you. And I can assure you that is a part that will obviously continue on as part of IDEAGEN. We are now a part of a team of over 700 people here globally, bringing game-changing solutions to you. And I think what I also wanted to share is that all of our Qualtrics team has had the opportunity to stay and continue on with IdeaGen, which is just not always the case in an acquisition. Uh, but uh, why we were doing this with them, why this seemed like such a great opportunity uh, for our customers and our team is that we are actually establishing uh, the IDEAGEN North America headquarters here in Blacksburg, Virginia. And we will be bringing not just Qualtrics to North America, but all of the IDEAGEN product of family. And that includes a lot of different solutions, which is really cool. We have solutions from not just quality management, audit, risk, compliance, uh, also uh, significant collaboration technology and tools. So there is a, a much larger suite of products now available to, available to you as part of our customer base. And I wanted to also share with you a little bit about, well, what does that mean for the Qualtrics product and where we're taking it for the future? All really exciting news for our users. So as you may know, IDEAGEN also has another quality management offering called QPulse. So what we are doing today, and we've already started down this journey together, is we are looking to build them together as one best-in-class quality management solution. Uh, so as we continue to add value to our Qualtrics offering and the QPulse offering, our goal is to bring those solutions together over time. And your feedback on what's most important will be a very, very big part of what that uh, solution continues to look like as we evolve. I thought it'd be really neat to share some of the things you can immediately start accessing today that you might not have been aware of as part of uh, our new IdeaGen organization. We have uh, several different types of uh, technologies that uh, can be used uh, in conjunction with Qualtrics. One I wanted to mention is called Huddle. And in fact, I know some of our customers are already Huddle customers, which is fantastic. Huddle is a very powerful FedRAMP authorized collaboration technology. And it allows you to do online document collaboration in a very secure way. And it also provides client portal solutions, which is something I know I've heard from many of you. It's really cool. We've been using it ourselves for some of our projects. I highly encourage you to check it out. Uh, another offering that we have, too, is uh, through a new acquisition here in North America from my corporation, is a mobile data collection application. So uh, what we're actually going to be doing is integrating that app into Qualtrics. And any of you who might have a need to be collecting data Maybe it's in a plant floor. Maybe it's somewhere where you don't actually have internet connection, like you're out doing an inspection in a field type of environment. You can collect that data, sync it up later to your, to your system, do some really cool reporting. I've seen some very snazzy forms that can be created with this application as well. So those two solutions are something I really am excited for you to learn more about. We've included uh, information and some introductory demos of those as part of your login access today. So, 
during the week, feel free to connect with us uh, on questions about Qualtrics and where we're headed, as well as other solutions that might be available to you. So, hey, Jim. Your orders. <laughs> okay. Top secret <laughs> from the top. All right. Thank you, sir. This looks serious. Calls for shades. You may or not be aware that today's uh, theme for our conference is Secret Agent. You have a mission. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to rendezvous with an elite team of quality and compliance experts. We've brought together Qualtrics experts, accrediting bodies, and fellow Qualtrics users to help you get the most value of the Qualtrics system and make your life easier. We have learned that you may or may not be used to doing things in the same way because it's comfortable. Today, the mission is about thinking outside of the box and getting outside of your comfort zones. You will create innovative processes, learn ways to manage your teams and projects more effectively, and ultimately have more time to keep doing what you do and changing the world for the better. You now have your license to learn. You know we had to be cheesy a little bit here at Qualtrics. It is the user conference. <laughs> all right, super excited today uh, to have you all with us. It's an important mission you're on. I know we're gonna, you're going to get a whole lot out of it, uh, and we'll be here to connect with you all along the way. Uh, to jump in and get us off to a fantastic start, I really want to welcome a new friend of ours here in the Qualtrics community, Toye Oshani. Uh, Toye is currently a producer at Dominion Risk Advisors. Uh, he has worked in a lot of different industries and many different positions. In fact, Toye has worked in over 20 jobs before turning 30. So uh, he's got quite a lot of different experiences that he can pull from. He did everything from flipping burgers at Burger King to assisting celebrities as an intern for HBO. He has had uh, a vast array of successful business ventures from landscaping to real estate investing. And today, what we're excited for Toye to talk with you about is his perspective on how organizations can thrive in an uncertain world. Uh, I think that is certainly relevant today, helping talk about communicating fear, empathy, and failure with your employees, future employees, regardless of the size or type of organization. So we're really appreciative of Toye uh, spending some time with us. And without further ado, I would like to turn it over to Toye. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2021 Qualtrics Digital User Conference. My name is Toye Oshini, and I would like to thank Qualtrics for this amazing opportunity to kick off this year's events. This is the 13th conference that Qualtrics has done, and I was told that they do it about every 18 months. 18 months. I want you to really think about the last 18 months and everything we've been through. I've been through a lot, you've been through a lot, Lord knows my kids and my wife have been to a lot. Trump, Biden, Harris, Kobe Bryant's death, killer wasps, Black Lives Matter, the pipeline, cyber attacks, remote work, hybrid work. Now we've got the Delta variant and we can't forget about good old fashioned COVID-19. Now that's just the tip of the iceberg of events that have changed our world forever, but yet, we are still here. We are, most of us are all still here. We have persevered, we have pivoted, and we have adapted. Now, let's not break our arms patting ourselves on the back just yet. There is still so much to do, and there are still so many opportunities that we can seize. This is your chance to do things that you have never done before. I do believe that more businesses will achieve a level of greatness that they would have never imagined due to the pandemic. In today's world, organizations are trying their best to navigate the waters of normalcy while integrating their employees back into the office. Now, I do understand that some of you may be deemed essential workers, and you might not be dealing with this and it might not be affecting your culture. However, no matter how big or small your business, you are gonna to have to deal with the talent revolution. And the most important imperative about the talent revolution is how organizations attract, retain, engage, and develop their people. The war for talent is real. 
How real, you might ask? Let's look at some statistics. A study done by McKinsey said that 43% of organizations plan to increase headcount within the next six months. Another study showed that HR managers anticipate that 8.2% of their workforce is gonna quit once restrictions are fully lifted. And another study done by Microsoft shows that 40% are planning to leave their current employer. If you are not reconsidering, refreshing, and reinventing your talent acquisition strategy, there's a good chance you'll be left behind. The phrase, we have always done it this way, is no longer acceptable. And I do believe this should be celebrated. We all know that that one single phrase can be the killer of innovation and creativity. And there are many pathways to greatness. And I do think that eliminating this thought is one of the most key pathways to greatness. This is the opportunity for change. And this is the opportunity for a lot of organizations to figure it out. I was told that the theme of this year's conference was secret agents, so I immediately thought of Agent 007. I was really excited, one, because I love 007's movies. But I always thought that the most important character was Q. Q had all the inventions to solve all the precarious situations that Mr. Bond would get himself into. But if you ever noticed, Q expressed three things in three simple words. He expressed fear for James. He celebrated the failures of his innovations because he knew it would lead to his success. And he always expressed empathy. And the three simple words he used to say was, James, be careful. The stress on leaders has never been greater. And the stress on your employees are equally as great. The time that I share with you, I want to discuss how fear, empathy, and the celebration of failure could help you achieve a level of greatness, not just in business, but in other aspects of your life. I want to bring you back with me in a time to 2019. For me, it was an amazing year for myself and my family. We have three beautiful, healthy daughters. And on the side, my wife and I have a little side hustle where we flip real estate. We had just purchased our dream home and we'd put down a considerable down payment from the profits from the houses we flipped. I had about $10 million in my pipeline, and my main goal was to help organizations improve their employee attraction, retention, and engagement through their office space. In short, I sold office furniture. Fast forward to July. I found myself unemployed, all due to the pandemic. I'll never forget when I broke the news to my family. My eight-year-old daughter came up to me and she asked me, Dad, are we going to be homeless? I said, no, baby, everything is going to be okay. And even later on in the day, she came back to me and she said, hey, Dad, I've got some extra money in my piggy bank so we can eat and pay bills. That really pulled on my heartstrings. Now, the craziest thing about this transition, I had a tremendous amount of excitement of change that was going to be coming but I was also extremely scared. I was so excited though for what God had planned for me next. Some of the organization and businesses were faced with the same dilemma. How do you explain to your team, your family, the rest of your employees that God has a plan, you guys are gonna be okay? I knew as the sole breadwinner of my family, I had to figure it out. What was I going to do? One thing I did know, I had three things that I had to do right away. One, I had to not only be transparent about my fears, but also acknowledge my family's fears. Secondly, I had to express empathy for my wife and my children. And lastly, I had to celebrate the fact and get my family in the same mindset that we are going to celebrate the failures that might come. But no matter what, I would not stop trying. Admitting my fear about not knowing what was going to happen next made me look vulnerable. And let me tell you something, I hate looking vulnerable. But at that moment, I wasn't sure. And I know we've all been there before where we've looked in the mirror and said, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? 
by expressing fear to your spouse, your coworkers, your family members, and employees, it does show vulnerability. And that vulnerability shows courage. Admitting fear gains trust, respect, and connection. I wanna repeat that. Admitting fear gains that trust from your team, respect from your team, and connection. These are three things that most leaders are trying to achieve. You all remember Bear Grylls, the guy that used to eat grub worms on TV. He said it best. Being brave isn't the absence of fear. It's acknowledging and finding your way through it. And we all know that fear kills more dreams than failure ever will. As a leader or in a relationship, showing fear means that you're pushing the envelope and you're doing things that take you out of your comfort zone. This may not be easy to admit that you're afraid as a leader, but I'll be the first to step up with you and say you're not alone. Leading is an enormous responsibility, but your employees are with you in this. I knew when I was let go from my job, there was fear in my heart, in my wife's heart and my children. And the only way to subside these fears was to admit to them and myself that we are a family and we're gonna be okay. The comfort of their leaders showing vulnerability is what was the start of greatness for my family and the relationships I cared most about. Secondly, I wanna talk about empathy. Empathy is the capacity to recognize and understand other people's feelings, to put oneself in someone else's shoes. And this is a critical leadership skill. Common sense tells us that it's a basic human quality most, le most leaders have or would like to have in their arsenal. But in fact, many of them do not, and they get this wrong. A shortage of empathy in the workplace leads to a lack of employee engagement, which impacts productivity. And this, product, this productivity costs businesses upwards of $600 billion a year. How does this happen? I think it's confusing empathy with sympathy. Sympathizing means you're feeling sorry for an employee's situation. It isn't the same as understanding their feelings and their needs or even building rapport. When we, take a hard, when we take a look at hard lessons learned and channel them into the ways we communicate with our team, we foster engagement. We do this by actively listening, being open to feedback, and approaching our employees with attention and care. A recent paycheck survey of 1,000 employees, American employees, said that over 50% of them said their team leaders do not acknowledge stress or burnout. And only 44% encourage talking about frustrations at work. Those team leaders are seen as unengaged from the issues impacting the well-being of their team. And they contribute to the fact that 40% of US workers are considering a job change in 2021. We all know your employees are your biggest assets. And if you want to retain them and attract the best talent, exhibiting empathy, not sympathy, will help you achieve that goal. We all remember that favorite boss, that boss that just got you, said the right things, was always there for you, and listened. I would guarantee that they express empathy and it was one of their strongest qualities. So as you return to the office, please remember to express empathy to your staff and coworkers. Even if you aren't returning to the office, please express empathy to your team. Robin Williams said, everyone you meet is fighting a battle you know nothing about. Be kind, always. The last thing I'd like to talk with you about is celebrating failure and the growth zone. In order to get into the growth zone, you need to get out of your comfort zone you will experience fear and failure to get into that growth zone. I believe this statement is why failure needs to be celebrated. 98% of our population just chills out in the comfort zone. And let me tell you a few words 
that are associated with the comfort zone. Play it safe, surviving, being like everyone else. And the number one is regret, regret. Now, only 2% of our population gets into the growth zone. Let me tell you the words associated with the growth zone. Living dreams, excitement, abundance, fulfillment, happiness, living without limits. I'm sure some of you have children, and I want to take you back to when they first started to walk, and they were learning to walk. Did you give up on them? No. But you know they were going from their comfort zone of crawling up into that growth zone of being able to walk. You celebrated every single failed attempt. You were positive, you were uplifting, and you were encouraging. How has your organization responded to the pandemic? How have your leaders responded? The importance of expressing to your team that you are in uncharted waters is okay. And you, your company, and your leaders are going to make some wrong decisions on how you may return to work and the new policies and procedures, but you are committed to getting it right. You have to be willing to listen to the needs of the employees and remember that every failure creates an opportunity to get it right. My father passed away when I was six months old. I was told that he drowned in the ocean. Later on in life, I was actually told the truth that he was murdered. There my mother was, single mother with no family support, living in New York. She taught my brother and I a lot of lessons. And I know it was hard for her to be a mother and a father at the same time, but she taught us so many lessons. And most of the lessons we learned were from watching her, her work ethic, her discipline, her standards. We didn't have much, but we had strength and courage in the leadership role. She exhibited vulnerabilities and explained that the world is a cruel place and stressed how important it was for us not to give up. She also stressed about how important failure was. And failure was celebrated but not accepted in our house. I know that might sound strange, but it was celebrated but not accepted. Repeated failure over the same thing over and over again wasn't accepted. But she also knew the process to dealing with failure and overcoming it would be vital for her two sons to survive in this world and succeed. Your employees will match the behavior of leadership. And as we go into this new phase in our lives, it is vital that we don't let this opportunity for change pass us by. If ever there was a time to be vulnerable and transparent with your team, it is now. COVID has given permission to challenge the status quo. Embrace it, don't run from it. Engage in your leaders, but also just as important, communicate and engage with your employees. Express your fears as an organization. Show relentless empathy and celebrate the failures because they will create the opportunities, and the innovation. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope and pray that you enjoy the rest of your conference. Big thanks to Toye Oshini. We really appreciate him sharing his personal experiences with us today. I know given all of us a lot to consider as we are on our own personal and professional growth path. Thank you, Toye. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, before we roll into sessions, we have a special feed for you today out of the UK. Uh, we didn't want to uh, announce our news about being part of IdeaGen uh, without giving you a chance to actually meet uh, the CEO of IdeaGen, Ben Dorks. So I'm going to turn it over to him. He is actually talking to us today from our headquarters office in the UK. Ben? Good morning. My name is Ben Dorks, I'm Chief Executive of IdeaGen. Welcome to the Qualtrics User Conference. I'm sure over today you're going to have a great time listening to some really interesting and informative sessions on our products, our product roadmaps, uh, 
listening to customers and the successes and journeys that they've been on using the Qualtrics product. I thought I'd take the opportunity just to speak today to, to welcome you into the IDAGen community. Uh, obviously from our acquisition of Qualtrics in, uh, in March, uh, I'm sure that you probably felt a, a little bit of uncertainty as many customers do as they, uh, as they look at the organization they're so successfully dealt with over many years, uh, be taken over by another company, especially a British company. Uh, but hopefully uh, you now feel that uh, we've gone through those early stages and that you're starting to see the benefits of Qualtrics as part of a, of a larger, more global organization. We continue to invest into our North American operations by strengthening our team, focusing on areas of support and cloud and product development. We continue to focus on uh, uh, accelerating the roadmap uh, ensuring that you, our customers, are seeing ever more positive and beneficial outcomes from utilizing our products. And I think what really excites us is the opportunity that we have to grow our North American base, uh, bring in more customers into the IdeaGen community, and really create a, a network of organizations that are sharing and collaborating and creating innovation in our core markets. Over the next over over the rest of today uh, i hope you have a, a great time and most importantly you start to really feel the benefits of the idea gen community and i look forward to talking to you maybe not virtually next time maybe even in real life as we get the chance to to meet and share more information uh, at the next qualtrax user conference but have a great day and thank you very much